If this is the first episode that you have found the financial mirror this year, let me tell you, you have come at a perfect spot. If you're not first, you're last, hence the race stripes on the cover art. But all in all, this is the end of the year and we are wrapping up 2022. And today I want to show you how you can wrap up your end of year in a big way. That's right. Big as in B-I-G, and those three letters do mean something. So let's jump in to show you how you can wrap up this year's finances. Welcome to the Financial Mirror. Financial Mirror. Where future success is reflected in our knowledge of fixing the one thing we can control ourselves. Thank you for joining me today on The Financial Mirror as we continue to improve the one thing you can control yourself. If this is the first time joining in, as I stated at the beginning of the episode, thank you so much for joining in today. And if you are on YouTube or Facebook or Meta or whatever they call themselves now, go ahead and hit the like or the subscribe and give that extra little oomph to watch the next episode when it comes out. If you are on a podcast platform of your choice, go ahead and hit the five-star review on Apple and Spotify and leave a written comment as those go a long way in getting this information out to more and more listeners. I'm here to tell you that 2022 has been an amazing year. And I'm I'm saying that uh, slightly selfishly, but Financial Mirror has grown and, and it's grown um, much faster than I expected. And it continues to grow every single day. It seems like it's it's a, it's a little bit bigger than it, than it was the day before. And you know, I'm very thankful for that. But people love the end of the year. People truly love wrapping up their end of the year. Why? Well, mostly because people look at it as a chance to start over. Well, with the financial mirrors case, I'm not here to start over. I'm here to continue uh, to grow and give you more and more content, more and more information that you can use to benefit your personal finances. But ultimately, most people look at the new year as a chance to start over. It's like they're closing one chapter and they're going to start with a new one. And this leads me to many really just thinking back on the year and really trying to realize like like what could i have done better right like what could i have done better in in the the last year that i plan on doing different in the upcoming year and this year i'm sure will be no different for so many people out there for the simple fact that the year is over or almost over we're wrapping it up very very quickly it's hard to believe that uh christmas is right around the corner but i can't believe it's already december 20 uh, 2022, right? It seems like December, 2021 was just here. And I can tell you that this year has flown by. It may have flown by for you too, but we moved from Hawaii. The financial mirror has continued to grow. As I stated, uh, we continue to, to push through the year. We've had the midterm elections and the S and P is down 19% year to date. <laughs> That's a, uh, that's a little joke, right? Uh, it is down. I, I just pulled this. This is the Friday reading as of December the 16th. I, I pulled this. Um, and we are. We're down 19.68% as of the Friday reading, the S&P 500. And that's crazy because I looked back at last year's episode where I sort of did a checklist to, to really run you through some of the things that you can do to wrap up your year. But I looked back at it and it was funny because I was I was flaunting at the S and P was up twenty two percent last year as of the episode recording, and uh, now we're down nineteen point six eight percent. But on the bright side, even with all of this red on the screen, all the red in your account currently, just remember overall the S and P five hundred does tend to go upwards, right? Tends to go upwards. And even with this 19% negative year to date, look back at the 22% and we're still up 3%, right? Over the past two years, your money has grown 3%. 
is that great? Well, no, it's not the the you know eight to ten percent we're used to uh, on a by year basis. But I mean, let's be honest. It I mean, it's not down over the last two years. I mean, at least it's growing. Okay, I'm just trying. I'm trying to be positive here. I really am trying to be positive. But three uh, percent actually is funny. Um, if you look at high yield savings accounts right now, uh, they're paying about three percent. So, I mean, right now you could get about this a better well right now you can get a better return for your dollar than the negative 19 on the screen but uh all in all 2022 has been great it really has minus the you know this 19 percent drawback uh, it has been a great year and hopefully it's been great for you but with all this great stuff going on i am sure that you have some like last last minute like wrap-up things you're trying to knock out maybe you're not done christmas shopping i hope so uh, but I, you might not be. Maybe you still have a lot of Christmas traveling you need to you need to to plan. I don't know what it is for you, but I wanted to give an episode that when we look at this from a personal finance perspective, I want us to look at how we can really just a quick checklist. What can I do uh, to wrap up this year and get ready for next? What can I do? Like what's a, what's some steps I can take? Uh, before I set that New Year's resolution to do whatever that that New Year resolution is, what is some things that that I can do that can benefit me, right? That can benefit my personal finances. Well, with all of this, you know, I, I thought, you know, what better way to do it than to create another checklist that you can use to go through and make your 2022 end in a big way. I don't know if it's just me or if it's everyone, but 2022 is not the easiest one to say 2021 2019 2023 all those seem easier than 2022 it might just be me but every time i say it right now it feels weird and i guess i've been doing it for 12 months but it still feels weird so with all that being said i want this to be a good year for you i want you to end this in a big way they you know these these things i'm going to go over today are very universal meaning you can take these and apply them to your life no matter where you are I don't care if you're a millionaire or you're just scraping by with your cash. You can take these and make them applicable to your life. Okay. So that's the first part is that they're very, very universal. The second part of what we're going to go over today, it is scalable, meaning you may not be able to do it to the max, but if you'll do it just a little bit, you will be better off next year than you were this year at this point. You will see growth right? And that's the whole point. We want to see growth. We want our money to to continue to expand. We want to get better every, every year. So if you'll take these, these little, these little quick steps and get through this acronym BIG, you will wrap up 2022 the right way. And you'll be begin to prepare for 2023 and what it's going to bring. So if you're reading in between the lines, you can kind of already see what my B, my I, my G is on the screen. But uh, we're going to jump into them. For those on the podcast, you have to stick around. You've got to listen to the whole episode to figure what B-I-G is. Uh, but anyways, let's jump in and let's get started with the first letter, the B. So for B, we're going to start with budget. What is a personal finance podcast without budget? So prepare your budget and review your spending. That's what I really want to focus on. Not just like, oh, you need to budget. But like really like what we're trying to do here is we want to do some type of cash flow analysis. This actually is one of the most fun times of the year for me, if I'm being totally honest, because think about it. When you were in school, you loved getting report cards. This is kind of your report card. If at the beginning of this year, if you did this with me last year, you can remember this and and you probably are, are looking back like, wow, this is the first year I've really got to do this. But if you really think about it with report cards, you had a chance to to see where you were at. You had a chance to to see like this is what I ended up in this class, right? Like that grade, that A, that B, that C. Well, this cash flow analysis at the end of the year is kind of your opportunity to do that with your money. If you knew last year that you were spending too much money on X, Y, Z, whatever it is, maybe it was shopping, maybe it was eating out, uh, maybe it was subscriptions, whatever. If you saw that last year and you were like, I'm going to change that, this is your this is your time. Grade yourself. Did you change it? Did you not change it? The big part here is to be honest with yourself. Be honest with where you're at and be honest with where you're trying to go. So 
this cash flow analysis is going to be just like that report card. It's going to show you how you did this year. So ultimately, knowing this is super awesome. If you haven't done it before, I challenge you to do that this year. Let that be a task. Let that be something that you want to strive for. But ultimately, what you want to work on right now is figure out how you did this year. So to do that, it's pretty straight straightforward. What you want to look for is where your money went this year by category. So if you use uh, an Excel budget uh, spreadsheet or something like that, you'll just need to pull all your spreadsheets together, start adding up how much you spent in each category. If you do this uh, on more of an electronic basis, like Mint or Every Dollar, and my two favorite online options for budgeting, they both allow you to categorize all year. So right at this point, you could actually just see how much you spent in each category, right? And that's kind of the where we want to be right now. We want to be at where we spent most of our money in each category this year. What we can then do with that data is we can start to really have this like wake up call, right? We can really have this like change in mindset where if you ate out for 40, 50, 60% of your income and you're like, holy smokes, like I don't even enjoy eating out that much. I spent so much money there. Maybe that's time for you to change it. Maybe that's a chance for you to say, you know what? I'm going to cut back on how much I'm eating out. Think about changing the thing about uh, when we look at money and money changes and what I've seen successful with clients over the years. Don't try to change huge. Don't try to make these big drastic changes. Don't go from eating out every day uh, in a month to eating out like once, a, you know, every week and a half or every two weeks, right? It's too drastic. You're not going to stick to it. I'm telling you, you won't stick to it. So make these like little small changes. This year, instead of eating out every day in the month, maybe you only eat out once a week or maybe, and you know, so like, like five or six times a month. I don't know, just averaging it out. But that's kind of what we want to do with this cash flow analysis. We want to look at where we overspent in our eyes, right? I'm not here to tell you how much you should spend on personal care, how much you should spend on food and dining, how much you should spend in all these different categories. What I'm here to do is bring light to uh, give you the ideas, give you the, the notion to go out and check how much did you spend in these categories and how can you fix it? How can you start to take that in another direction and, and really start to, to, Create some of that opportunity to save, create some of that opportunity to invest, pay off your debt faster, things of that nature. But look at where you spent, look at where your highest spent categories are, and now make your goal. 2023, I'm not going to spend this much in this category this year. This year is going to be a little different for you. And that is a great way to go into it. Uh, so that's kind of the B, the budgeting part. I really just want you to start prepping your budget for next year. I'm not talking like you are budgeting for the whole year, right? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we want to prep that. If last year, every month you gave yourself a thousand dollars to eat out, let's try 900 this year. Let's try 950. Let's just make gradual changes in those areas that we are overspending. If last year we were giving ourselves $500 a month to shop with, maybe this year we drop it to 450, 475 even, right? Like that's extra money every month going somewhere else, like savings or investing. So let's look at that. I wanted to bring one thing up in this episode, and I've done an episode on this in the past, but I wanted to bring it up because with my clients, I'm seeing this more and more as growing in popularity, but subscriptions have become one of the largest expenses in many people's budgets. Okay. And I wanted to bring it up right here in today's episode, because no matter where you look, there is a subscription tied to it. And if you are ready to really take control of your finances, taking control of how much you are spending on subscriptions, it's a great place to start, right? It's a great place to start. But if this is something you notice during your cash flow analysis that you are spending a ton of money on subscriptions, let's tighten that up. Start canceling those that you don't need. Take a real take a really good look at them and be honest with yourself. Do you actually use it? And if you don't, cancel it. You can always start it back. But subscriptions are absolutely demolishing people's budgets. They truly are demolishing them. Like there's, I mean, ridiculous amounts of money that are going out into subscriptions. And it used to be, it used to be like eating out, like food, the whole food category, mostly from eating out would drive a lot of budgets, but that has 
started to shift more towards subscriptions, right? The most controllable expense now is becoming subscriptions. And, and it, it's, it's crazy. But take a look at it. Just take a look at it for yourself to see what yours is and, and start to focus on that. One other one that's not exactly budgeting per se, um, but I wanted to bring it up because just one of those things you need to do before the year ends is your uh, flexible spending account funds. You need to make sure you spend those. So this isn't really budgeting per se, but it kind of is because it is income. You know, you put money aside in this FSA, this flexible spending account, and you have to use that up. You've got to use that up before the end of the year. So uh, a couple things that you might do with that. Uh, maybe you, you want to use it on like maybe some eyeglasses, some sunglasses, some a baby monitor, sleep mask, medical supplies, shoe inserts, foot massagers. I don't know. There's a ton of items out there. There's a whole like FSA store online that shows you a whole bunch of applicable things that you can spend this flexible spending account money on, but see how much you have. And if it's a lot of money, you need to go spend it. So uh, take yourself on a little FSA spree, I guess, figure out some things that you need. Don't just go like crazy in terms of buying stuff that you'll never need. It'd be better to fill your cabinets full of like band-aids and stuff. I don't know. Um, but things that you may use versus like, oh yeah, I'm going to get this baby monitor and I don't even have a baby and I don't plan on having a baby for 10 years. Just buy like a bunch of band-aids and Neosporin. I don't know. That'd probably that'd come in more handy than a, a baby monitor that you don't, you don't exactly need or anything, but um, just take this money and, and go and spend it on things that you can fill your house with. But the, the big thing is to not lose that money. You put that money into that account. And if you haven't used it yet, now's the time to do it. Take a look around, call your doctor, see if you have any outstanding bills. Um, then you can start to use that money for that, but, but don't let this money go wasted. Okay. Don't let it go wasted. Um, it's a, it's a, um, something that you, you need to use by the end of the year. And it's, it's something that it, it, it has to go right. Like it has to go and, and now's the time to use it. So if, if you do have it, just spend it, uh, figure out what it is and then roll with it. Now on to the next. So that's our B budget. Kind of hit a couple things, but just do the cash flow analysis, uh, check your subscriptions, and use those FSA funds. It all kind of falls into your budgeting category uh, for your money. Now, the I, the I is invest. Second thing you need to do is you need to get your money right so you can invest, right? Like that's a big thing. Invest in your IRA, invest in your 401k. These are all things that are calculated on an annual basis. And the thing about them that I tell so many people is I don't care how much money you can put in there. It's important you put some money in there because the thing about 401ks, the thing about IRAs is they have contribution limits. So if this year you can't put a whole lot of money in there, that's okay. But let's say you didn't put anything in there, right? If you let this year pass and you didn't put anything, you can't go back to the year 2022 and put more money in. That can never happen, right? So in 2023, you're like, oh, I want to put 10,000. Well, you can't. You can't put 10,000 into your IRA, right? There's a contribution limit. So every year that passes that you don't put money in there, you missed an opportunity to, to fund that account. So I don't really, I don't, I'm not telling you to put vast amounts of money in there. What I'm telling you is to figure out how much can you put in there and go and do it. Because if you can put some money into that IRA, if you can do some money into that 401k, that's money that will will fund your future retirement, right? Like everyone's going to retire at some time. You just got to you got to start funding money in there. So, starting off with the retirement accounts, the limits for 2022 are 20,500 for the 401k and 6,000 for the IRA. Uh, on the screen, you can see the catch-up contributions, uh, 27000 for the 401k for 50 plus and 7000 for the 50 plus IRA. And like I said, what I'm not saying is to max these things out. If you can, cool. Like, cool thing. You maxed it out. But what I am saying is figure out how much works for you and start putting some money in there. If you can only contribute $100 into that account, do it. If you can max it out, do it. Regardless of how much you can do, contribute as much as you can. So you can take advantage of another year of contribution 
and compound interest. Because like I said, you can't go back and fund this later on for this year. You can always fund it for future years. I got it. But you can't go back and fund it for this year. Now, specifically, I wanted to talk about the 401k because more than likely for the, for the IRA, it's easy. You're going to log into whatever broker your, your IRA is with and you can fund that money in there. When you choose a little drop down menu, you'll fund it for this year. And there you go. For the 401k, it's a little different. You're going to need to log into your employer, uh, whatever provider they go through for your 401k. And you'll need to either A, increase your contribution and try to get a check or two uh, with a higher contribution percentage. Or B, some providers allow you to uh, do a one-time contribution inside of those portals. If you do change the percentage, the contribution percentage, just go back in January and change it back to what it was before and it won't continue to draw out at that amount. But the biggest thing there is to just go and fund it with a little bit more than, than you may have funded it with before and go from there. That's a great opportunity for you to fund a little extra money to close out this year, right? A little extra money to go close out this year because that is money that you will need when you retire. So go ahead and pay your future self today before 2022 ends. The last step right here is the G. You got to give. If you have maxed out your retirement accounts, you, you, or you just have a heart or you want to give a little bit of money to some type of charitable donation or through a charitable donation, go and do it. This could be to a church. This could be to a local charity. This could be to you know whatever college you're an alumni of. Pretty much anything. Uh, this is for two important reasons that you should do this. First off, if, if you know, is you should pick the first obvious is to pick an organization you care about. You're literally putting money towards something that will warm your heart knowing you made a difference. So if you'll pick something that you genuinely care about, you will have a great feeling knowing you helped out that organization. Second one, obviously, is the tax bill. Donating this money, it will decrease your tax bill because you'll be able to take it out as charitable donations, and that'll come off of your adjusted gross income. Now, the IRS does have specific code around what is considered a qualified organization. You can see it on the screen. But if you don't see it here, uh, you can look these up. Just look up qualified organizations for the IRS, and they will give you some, some, different, uh, some different criteria that these need to meet. Uh, almost all charitable organizations out there that are some type of nonprofit or something like that, that's going to be a charitable donation that you can use as a tax write-off. So make sure that that you are going out and um and 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 contributing here because, like I said, a you're, you're going to have a good, warm and fuzzy in your heart that you helped out, and b uh, you will obviously have a lower tax bill for that sweet donation that you created. So b i g budget, invest, and give. That's what we're focused on. That's how we're closing out 2022. We're going to go and do that cash flow analysis. We're going to look at those highest spent categories, and we're going to fix that moving into the next year. We're going to invest. We're going to hit up that 401k. We're going to hit up that IRA. We're going to start really filling those things up, and then we're going to give. We're going to give with comfortable donations uh, from comfortable. Uh, we're going to give to charitable donations uh, so that you know we can we can get out there and really help out. But you can see there's a lot of things that you can do to close out 2022 for your finances. And if you're honest with yourself, you know, there's a certain one in here that you may do better or worse than others. Maybe you don't really ever do that end of the year analysis. Maybe you don't ever really look at how much more could I have contributed to my retirement accounts. Or maybe you've never even considered giving to a uh, some type of charity out there through a donation. That's something that you should jump on. That's all stuff that you really need to do because those are foundation principles. Those are things that every single year, if you'll keep at the front of your mind, you'll make decisions that'll help your tax bill at the end of the year. Taxes are a weird thing, right? It's the weirdest thing. Uh, you, you, you know, you, you have this requirement. And it's this unwritten requirement. And it's kind of written, right? Like if you did enough math, you could calculate it and figure out what your tax bill is. But then all of a sudden you, you, have, you have all of these deductions, right? All of these deductions, you have 
all of these 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 different credits, tax credits, which are different than the deductions, and and you have all of these things out there, and you're trying to you know come up with this magic number of what do I owe for taxes, and then make sure you've paid enough, right? And make sure you paid enough, and at the end of it all, you know maybe you miscalculated. <laughs> And you owe more than you expected, or you paid less in taxes and, and, or you paid more in taxes and now you get a refund. All of these things are, 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 you know, end of year things that if you would have thought about months and months ahead of time, you could have kind of better prepared for. Uh, and that's what I wanted to do this, this year. I wanted to really ha- hook you up with some really actionable steps that you can take to make 2023 and those finances a little bit better than 2022. You followed my steps last year. I'm hoping that, that this year you, you're, you've come to this point and you're like, man, I am so eager to do this again because this year it was awesome. What I can tell you is that the more and more you do this, the easier and easier it becomes, the more and more second nature it is, and you will improve your finances. I'm telling you, you'll improve your finances. These are foundational principles, investing, budgeting, giving, foundational principles to finances. Something that's out there uh, that a lot of people don't don't realize is that is that going from from point A to point B is not a linear thing. Going from point A to point B is not all the time uh, just this straight line. I heard on a on a Jocko podcast, and this is kind of how I wanted to end this. Uh, so if you if you listen to Jocko uh, Willick's podcast, uh, you may have heard this too. But uh, the on the screen for for those that are watching, and, and maybe you you are. I listen on a podcast and, and and this this might this episode might run long. I'm not really sure. I don't even know what the time is. But what I'll tell you is this. I wanted to end this episode with this because as we start to wrap up this year, uh next next episode will be uh, a Christmas episode. I got something that I want to do for that. But I wanted to wrap up this episode with this because uh kind of kind of I mean it's kind of the last like real good um foundational episode that I've got before the new year, uh, because next one's going to be Christmas and the next one's going to be new year. Actually, they're all going to all fall, all fall right there together. But on the screen, you can see this quote, uh, better to do something imperfectly than to do nothing perfectly. Say it again, better to do something imperfectly than to do something, uh, do nothing perfectly. Right. So I, I say that, and I talk about the Jocko podcast because he talked in one of his episodes that he was he was discussing, um, and he was talking about how he, he was telling a friend that that was just really kind of down, things weren't going well, uh, and the guy was just like, you know, I just need to I need to do something, but I don't really know what to do, right? And Jocko's advice to this guy, to this, this friend of his, was, dude, just like start walking, right? Like just walk. And so I saw that as a title of the episode. The episode title was like, just start walking or something. I was like, what? Why, why would you just like, make, is he wanting to tell me like, just go walk around the block or whatever? But no, what he's actually talking about and when he's when he's going through that, uh, Jocko's saying like, if you will just start moving forward, if you'll just do something. Um, he, and he uses this analogy. It's like, you know, if you woke up in the woods and you had no idea where you were at and you were like, I don't know where I'm at, but I've got to go somewhere. I, you know, you could just sit here all day and be like, well, I could go to the left. I could go to the right. You could do that all day and you could come up justify to yourself like why you should do this or why you should go that way or why you should go this way. But what if you just started walking, right? Like you just started walking and then all of a sudden you ran into water and you're like, okay, well now I'm at water. Uh, now, you know, I know if I, if I walk down water, I may eventually find a bridge right? You may eventually find a bridge. So you just start following the path down water and then you get to the bridge and now you're like, okay, well now here's a road. Let me just start walking on the road. You, you started out not knowing where to go. Like you didn't know which direction to go, but then you, you just started walking until you found water and then you found water and that took you to a bridge. And then that bridge put you on a road and that road took you to a city. And now you have some idea of where you're at and where you can go next. Right. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to end this with is that this year, as this year comes up and, and we're getting ready to start that, and you're getting ready for that New Year's resolution, you're getting ready for all of these things, my advice to you is, is exactly what Jocko's was to his friend. Just start walking. Just do something. Just start taking steps forward. If you can't invest a whole bunch of money into your retirement, invest something. Take that first step. If you didn't do budgeting but the last two months of the year, 
because you caught this episode back in October and you're like, yeah, I need to start budgeting. And then you did it for November, December. Look at what your highest spent categories for that cash flow analysis is for November and December. Just do something. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't need this perfect spreadsheet. You don't need this perfect software. You don't need this perfect whatever. Maybe you, you can only give $50 to a charitable, charitable donation, right? Just do something. It doesn't have to be perfect. It really doesn't. Just start walking. That was a great analogy Jocko used, and, I, and, I, and I'll use it uh, moving forward. You might hear it again. Uh, if you keep listening to the episode, I'm sure I'll use it again because it's a really good analogy because so many people fail to start taking steps forward because they don't know if it's the right direction. So instead of doing something, even if it's wrong, they choose to do nothing. And at least if they tried something and it fails, they now know one way they can't do it. If they did nothing, you absolutely are still right where you are a week ago when you tried that first thing, right? So just something to keep in mind, a little motivation at the end. But uh, let's be honest, at the, end, at the end of the year, we really want to wrap this thing up and we want a great, great year. Now, we're, we're you know, we're wrapping up this. And and if at the beginning of the year, you're like, man, I, I really want to get started on my personal finances. I really want to take hold of that this year. And that's a goal of yours. Head over to thefinancialmirror.org and hit book now in the middle of the screen. When you do that, we can get scheduled for a free consultation. It'll only take 15 to 30 minutes of your time. We'll go through and see if a financial coach is right for you. And if it is, we will get you started on a plan and we'll move you closer to your goals. I don't care if it's getting out of debt. I don't care if it's saving for a house. I don't care if it's building retirement. I don't care what your goal is. We will build a plan for you so that we can start to take those steps forward and get you where you want to go. If you want to give a little extra dose of support to the stream, head over to thefinancialmirror.org forward slash shop and pick you up some awesome financial mirror gear. There's always new gear going onto the website. So head over and pick you up some today. I truly appreciate every single person tuning in today. I appreciate for the whole last year, for all those that have listened to episode after episode. Thank you. Uh, if you are on Facebook or you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, like this episode, share it with your friends. If you're listening on the podcast, don't forget to hit subscribe and leave a five-star review and a written comment as those go a long way. Till next week, continue improving the one thing you can control yourself. Peace. Well, that wraps up today's Financial Mirror. Join us next week as we continue to work on ourselves, change our mentality, and to commit to achieving the success we always envisioned. Regardless of your platform, help us grow as a community. Please like, subscribe, and share with the people in your lives.